Votants for joining us on the Primetime Newscast in the English Language on Canal The International. My name is Gladys Sambo Diban. Stay tuned for our major stories. A new general manager for the Cameroon Water Corporation, Camwater, Bless Musa, takes over from Jeve Bolinga. He was appointed today during a board meeting of the Water Corporation and is told shortly after his appointment in Douala this September 30, 2022. He was appointed alongside the new deputy general manager, Ngo Njiki. And in Gaoundere in the Adamawa region of Cameroon, symmetries are fast disappearing and it is becoming preoccupying to politicians and other authorities who have condemned its illegal occupation by individuals who have transformed the symmetries into residential areas. And calls have been re-echoed for Cameroonians all asunder to contribute for the return of the much-needed peace in Cameroon. Young people were out in their numbers this day at the National Museum in the nation's capital to make their voices heard in the peace building process. Those were major stories, developments right ahead. <laughs> Hello, thanks for joining us. You're watching the 6.15 Primetime Newscast in the English language on Canada International. We'll begin with this uh, news story just coming in. The Cameroon Water Utilities Corporation, Camwater, now has a new uh, general uh, manager as well as a new deputy general manager. Bless Musa, the new general manager, and God Jiki is a new deputy general manager. They were appointed during a board meeting of the Water Corporation that held in Dwarf of this September 30, 2022, and installed shortly after their appointment. The new general manager, Blaise Musa, who is equally board chair of the National Mining Corporation, Sonamin, takes over from Jeve Bolinga. The new GM comes at a time when the company is facing a lot of difficulties supplying households with water. And before the dismissal of the former general manager, he was reportedly summoned some weeks ago to take urgent measures to guarantee the quality of water produced at the Akomiada station, which supplies the nation's capital year one day and its environs. The new general manager is equally the current director of general affairs of the Ministry of Civil Service and Administrative Reforms and Principal Inspector of Taxes. And then we take you to Ngaundere in the Adamawa region of Cameroon, where symmetries are fast disappearing, and it is currently preoccupying politicians and administrative officials who have condemned the illegal occupation of these uh, graveyards with, uh, that have currently been transformed into residential areas. This is Ngaundere in the Adamawa region of the country, and the Cameroon Penal Code should be recalled sanctions, sanctions such invaders of symmetries with fines between uh, 10,000 CFA francs and 100,000 francs CFA. Morinzi has more on that story. <music> This vast land now occupies by houses used to be a graveyard. It is a common practice in Gaundere in the Damawa region where individuals have illegally constructed on graveyards with little fear of what might happen in the near future. A typical example is Mota Tura Cemetery, which have been completely invaded. It is the same scenario in Onuwe neighborhoods where graveyards have given way for the construction of houses. A common practice condemned by the Cameron Penal Code. We have sections of the Penal Code as sanctions such illegal invasion of graveyards. The invader could have three to five years imprisonment terms with fines from 10,000 to 100,000 francs CFA. But the administration should push these sanctions through. The officials, the Ministry of Property and Land Tenure should act. Its illegal occupation has provoked former senator and regional chair of the Social Democracy Front Party, 
condemn such actions and raise fears at the complete invasion of the municipal cemetery reserves for Muslims. If I have to do an evaluation, I would say the invasion rate is 100%. Take a look at the site reserved for Muslims. People are gradually invading the graveyards. In some parts of the cemetery, the construction of homes has made it harder to locate the remaining burial ports. It is difficult for me to trace where my father was actually buried. I know he was buried somewhere around here, but my family can't pay him their respect anymore. As the attempt to live normal lives in unlikely settlements, the cemetery dwellers would number at least several hundreds are not only living on the land illegally, but also face dangerous sanitation conditions. While the population of Garoua in the north region of Cameroon has been sensitized on the importance of vaccinating their pets in order to avoid the incurable rabies disease transmitted by the animals during a sensitization campaign in line with activities to mark uh, this year's uh, World Rabies Day on September 28th, it was disclosed uh, that the objective is to eradicate the rabies disease by 2030. Sheriff Asali has more on that story. At an advanced stage, rabies disease is incurable and deadly, according to veterinary surgeons. Rabies is a disease transmitted from animals to humans through bites. Domestic animals like duck, cat, and monkey are most common in the city of Garoua. This campaign against rabies is an opportunity for the owners of these pets to protect themselves and their animals. It does not only protect weed owners, it equally protects other animals from getting infected. We have to understand that rabies is incurable when its symptoms become intense. So it's important to get our pets vaccinated before time. My dog is very well, so by getting it vaccinated, I assure myself it can't harm anyone. The 16th edition in Garoua made it possible to rally the strategies of the National Order of Veterinary Surgeons and the Regional Delegation of Ministry of Livestock, Fisheries and Animal Industries, MINEPIA, for the northern part of Cameroon. The goal is to eradicate this dangerous disease by 2030. This day aims at sensitizing the population on rabies because the health sector intends to eradicate this disease between now to 2030. Rabies, one health, zero death, is the theme of this World Rabies Day observed every September 28th. Vaccines are administered to all these animals whose immunity will help in the fight against this deadly disease. Crisis or river blindness still remains endemic with a coverage rate of 80% or below 80% in different health districts in Cameroon. It is a result of a survey carried out by some experts and was made public in the nation's capital, Yawunde, yesterday. And the, so the study suggests that there should be the continuous uh, distribution of metazan to the usual campaign to effectively fight the river blindness, which is high in many areas in Cameroon. Beatrice Gamo with more. Despite more than 20 years of community-directed treatment with, with ivermectin, popularly known as Metizan strategy by the World Health Organization to fight against onchocerciasis or river blindness, the disease remains endemic by 60% in the 10 regions of the country. Avoid the low treatment coverages with the ivermectin for the onchocerciasis control that we observe in some communities of Cameroon. So the approach was to see how we could leave ivermectin longer in communities or at the health facilities so that those who were not present during the mass drug administration could still take their treatment. Results of a study by the experts proposing the integration of ivermectin mass drug administration in the primary health care system in the country. The focus of the Yaoundé deliberation. 
which is what a restitution is about. So we tell them what we found from the field and whatever gaps are there, they complete it. After this deliberative forum, we'll be able to come up with recommendations, which will be very important to give even to the Ministry of Public Health. Great opportunity challenging to community service providers. Convince the population of what we brought to them that it was good for their health. They were complaining of the fact that that's how we always bring them new medicines that disturb their bodies. Moves in line with the Onkosakaisis program. To treat everybody in endemic areas because those who are not treated continue to transmit the disease and will not be able to eliminate Onkosakaisis from our country. So we encourage everybody to take the drug. Onkosakaisis or river blindness is a parasitic infection due to the filaria nametod onkoseka volvusus. It represents the second most important infectious cause of blindness after trachoma. Some 21 million of people are infected worldwide. 99% living in 31 African countries, Cameroon included. And calls have been made for Cameroonians to contribute to uh, the much-needed peace in Cameroon. And young people were out in their numbers in the nation's capital, Yaoundé, precisely at the National Museum to make their voices heard uh, in the peace-building process. A call for separatist fighters to give peace a chance. Hi, Sanchia. Tell us more. The cry for peace in Cameroon is the focus for the first edition of this National Peace Day. Peace that has become far-fetched for a couple of years, threatened by the prevailing socio-political crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions and the Boko Haram insurgencies in the northern part of the country. We've been hearing peace, but yet we are yet to have that peace. You bear with me, we still have a Catholic priest that were kidnapped in Manfe in my new division in the southwest region that are yet to be found. Uh, we got, we're preparing uh, for, say, we have October 1st uh, tomorrow. We have a lot of messages that are going on. People, some people are saying that they should go out and march against the will of the government. Interreligious prayers for the Almighty God to intervene in the peace process in Cameroon. The spirit of wisdom that they might be justice and peace in our land. Cameroon's first lady, Chantal Bia, voted peace ambassador during this first edition with specific expectations. What we expect Madame Chantal Bia to do is to come out. Why not say a word to her children who are in the bushes, telling them to drop guns as a mother. And I'm very sure that. They are going to listen to her and it's going to be her own contribution in another way to bring in peace in Cameroon. And a call for every Cameroonian to contribute in one way or the other to bring back lasting peace in the country. And on the occasion of the International Translation Day, commemorated this September 30, 2022, officials of the Ministry of Justice have decided to evaluate the potentials of their translators and interpreters against the backdrop that bilingualism attracts much envy and is an asset that must be preserved by Cameroon, a bilingual country. The deliberations were chaired by the minister delegate at the Ministry of Justice, Zhang did you Momo? The details with Beatrice Ngamo. The move, new but very important to this judicial service, Justice Ministry, to ensure bilingualism that often passes through translators and interpreters are respected and maintained during all situations and circumstances. Cameroon is a bilingual country. English and French are official languages, but the shortcomings abound. So we have to make sure that our people keep as that heritage. A lot of countries doesn't have it as us. So when we have it, it's a great advantage in international. Celebrating the International Translation Day this Friday, September the 30th, linking it to bilingualism is to evaluate the potential and role of continuous professional development for legal translators and interpreters. Translation Day is for our people, our personnel working in the cabin traducing what we are saying in French or in English to the world, to the other people. It is important 
to congratulate them. It is important to encourage them. It's important to work with them. It's important to show them that they are important for us. High point of the day is the workshop of experience. As many will try to fit in the shoes of translators and interpreters. That is, non-professional will be in the booth to try to interpret and to leave what professional interpreters leave when they are in the booth. It is all about the theme of the day, a world without barrier, praising these professionals and contributions to international dialogue, peace and progress. And in sports, Cotton Sport, Rav Garwa and Bamboo Tools of Buddha are bracing up ahead of their clash for the Cup of Cameroon on Sunday uh, at the Amado Ayejo Stadium, an encounter highly awaited by their fans and supporters of uh, both teams. Heisen Chap paints a picture of the fanfare atmosphere uh, on the streets of Yaoundé two days to the encounter. This report. The streets of Yaoundé are boiling ahead of the Sunday encounter between the Bambutos of Mboda and Cotton Sport of Garwa. Flags of the two teams floating at all angles of the capital city. Fans constituting themselves into groups and animation clubs to push their sides to victory on October 2nd at the Amadou Ahijo Stadium. We are already ready for the decor that was the Dimanche. We have the veillé everywhere. De la carrière euh, au foyer Bambutos, nous sommes prêts dans tous les compartiments. On a su de nous de gagner des zéros propres. Like in 2016, when the Mangua Boys played the Cameroon Cup Finals against APGS of Mfu, the thousands of supporters are storming into Yaoundé to push the team to their first win of the prestigious Cup. Massive celebrations before the encounter. <laughs> According to the fans of the West Regional side, the stadium is not big enough to contain the massive turnout. In 2016, Bamuta had more than 100,000 supporters. So, the 45,000 places of the stade of Madhu Aijo were small to continue to the support of Bamuta. The sale of gadgets for both teams flew in rapidly at the eve of this memorable confrontation. The two sides are currently carrying out final touches in Yaoundé and while Bamboo will be vying to lay their hands on the gold medal of the Cameroon Cup, the Cotton Weavers will be fighting to grab their seventh title. <laughs> A highly awaited encounter indeed. And we move to Burkina Faso. Heavy gunfire has been reported near the main military camp and residential areas of Burkina Faso's capital. And according to the AFP, soldiers were seen along the main avenue leading to the presidential palace, administrative buildings and the national television station. And it is with that note that we wrap up this edition of the primetime newscast in the English language on Canal the International. The French edition will be yours at 7.50 p.m. with Alain Gislain Kanga. Up next is the brief, the L'Actualité du Sport with Mark Tramo. I will be yours again Monday. God's willing. Bye-bye.